Hey there, we are like days away from taking this car on its first drive. So today's job is to get all the controls connected, the gas pedal, the clutch pedal, the shift linkage, I wanna get that adjusted. That's job number one. There are a few more mundane tasks I wanna get done. Check it out. Garage time. This is the back of the car, the access hole where the transaxle shift rod comes through the tunnel. And then this is the shift rod connected to the shifter. So a few things, um, this rubber seal, I ended up having to put some zip ties on there. I don't know if that's normal. It wasn't really staying on, but uh, I zip tied it on there. I'll just trim the legs off. I think, I think that's okay. And then I also shimmed the transaxle just up a little bit to get this selector rod centered in the hole. And I did look at the parts diagram. There is a spacer for the 74. So I just made mine out of aluminum and spaced it up. So it's directly in the center. And then this is the coupler. And as you can see, it has these bushings in here. And I opted for, well, I actually bought this used, but I, mine has uh, bronze bushings in there. There is zero play in there. And they're oiled up, self-lubricating. This is the stock coupler. It's probably good for a little while these eventually will wear out again but as long as you keep your eye on them these harder bushings will last quite a long time and i'm starting from ground zero i don't have any reference marks or anything for this car so what i did is i tightened this one on the selector shaft first this is a pointed bolt and it goes inside a conical portion of the shaft so this portion is non-adjustable this is just locked on here this side here has a spline shaft and then this clamp bolt is what gives you the adjustment, both fore and aft, and then also in the angular direction. According to the manual, we need to position a few things. Let me show you that. Okay, both the uh, Porsche factory manuals and the Bentley manual, both make this look pretty easy. Basically, they tell you to, you know, I took the boot off of this so that this portion of the shaft is pointing straight up and down, not the bent side, and then you want this to be resting against a stop on the, towards the driver's seat. The Bentley manual is a little bit more clear on that. So you want this to be in the neutral position, resting against the stop towards the driver's seat and in a vertical position. And then back here, you basically just loosen the clamp and then rotate the shift rod all the way counterclockwise when you're looking at the rear of the car, all the way counterclockwise, and then you just tighten it up. And if that works, I will be impressed. So I can move that a lot, which means it was nowhere near in the right place. So once again, just checking this is vertical all the way to the left. And before I go any much further, I, I will say that I replaced all the bushings in the, there's a, a cup bushing down here. And then the, there's a guide tube bushing that holds the shift rod in place. All the bushings are basically new, including these bronze ones. So you should definitely uh, replace the bushings before you adjust anything vertical here all the way to the left here and then you just tighten it up I think I'm missing a lock washer I should put a lock washer on here and it says you know 17 foot-pounds is quite a bit so we'll make sure this is pretty tight there we go and uh, let's go sit in the other seat and see if it shifts I've been a little worried about this, to be honest, but maybe it's not as bad as I thought. So there's first gear, second gear, I guess third gear, fourth gear, fifth gear, there's a lockout for that one. And then reverse is going to be over and down. So it actually worked really pretty easily. Uh, it's a little bit of a relief to me because I am not even sure this transaxle uh, is okay internally, but the fact that you can shift through the gears at least mean this means the selector forks and all that stuff is not broken. And I can feel the gears engaging. It actually feels okay. Third, fourth, 
fourth, fifth, and reverse. I mean, that is awesome. So when it goes into first, it's not actually contacting, there's a stop here. It's not actually contacting the stop. And then if I go into second, same thing. It's not contacting the rubber base here. So that means it's getting its full travel without being impeded by the housing. Same thing for third. It's a little closer to the front than it is to the back. That's fourth. There's a, a little more distance towards the rear. I don't know that that really matters. They basically just said to have it vertical here. And then into fifth gear, there's a little more space here towards the front and reverse. It's not touching any of the stops. The only stop it touches is here on the side. And it does touch the stop when you go into reverse. So that is really cool. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pleased that that was easier than I thought. It's basically like half a page of the workshop manual. A little free play there in neutral. When it's in gear, it has a little bit of a wobble there. These cars are not really known for super precise shifting, and this is essentially a stock system. Let me grab the camera and I'll show you what it looks like with the boot off and also what it looks like back here as it shifts. This is probably one of the best views. Uh, this is in neutral with the lever against the driver's seat stop. So here I'm just wiggling it in neutral, off the stop and back on. It's off the stop and back on. And then first gear is this way. That's first, second, and then watch it rotate. Third, fourth, straight back, fifth, it's going to rotate again. That's fifth gear. Ro you can see the whole rotation here. Here's all the way to the driver's seat, all the way to the passenger seat. So it's just that little bit of rotation is enough to select the gears inside. So I'll go through one, two, three, four, five. Okay, here's the same view here at the shifter. So this is neutral and it's up against the stop here towards the driver's seat. So you just go straight forward for first, second, third, fourth, and fifth. This shift rod here is gonna contact this lockout. And when this goes over, this comes up. And I think that prevents you there's some spring pressure here. As it goes into fifth, this lever goes on that side of the tank. Same thing for reverse. It knocks into that little tab there, comes straight back, and it's locked in place right there. So what I was talking about earlier is the distance between the, the shifter and this housing. Uh, it's less than a pinky width there. And when it's in first gear, it's a little bit... I would say even smaller than a pinky width. So if you look at the distance, here's neutral, vertical. First, it's pretty close to the stop, it doesn't hit it. And then this is the second, it's also pretty close to the stop, but it's a little closer on that side. I'd say if any of the gears has trouble, it's second has the most trouble going in. And now I just got to do something about my clutch pedal. It is disconnected underneath. So I'm going to go underneath the car real quick. I forgot to do that earlier. Um, connect the cable and there is a procedure for adjusting the clutch travel and the free play. So I'm going to try to get that as close as I can. I just need to connect up that cable to the pedal uh, with this pin right here. So everything's greased up. I just need to put that pin in. Oh, good. Clipped on. All right. So that's now connected. 
And I think while I'm here, I can connect my gas pedal too. Two snaps. I got the wrong size um, fasteners to go on the cable, so got to find the right ones. Oh, the nuts are M7 by one millimeter pitch. That's going to be a hard one to find. I probably don't have them. I have the little clevis block but not the M7. So let's go to the store, see if they have M7s. Oh, there it is. You know, you could probably relate to this. I do have a big pile of nuts and bolts, but they're all dirty, they're not sorted, and it uh, takes me actually less time just to go to the store. I think this was like 17 cents, so that works out really well. Hope it is the right pitch. Okay, this has a ways to go. I have probably four inches of free travel. So just need to keep cranking it down. It's time to check the free play. I can tell there's some in there, so I just have a square here. So when it's all the way forward, all the way released, I might've gotten lucky. That is about eight tenths of an inch almost an inch. So that's about right. You know, my pedals are fully adjustable. I have a stop down here with a set screw so I can have the pedal come forward. But what I really want to do is manage the position of, of, of the clutch, the brake and the gas pedal. So they're all working together. So you can see right now the, the, the brake pedal, excuse me, is way too far forward. And I'm going to adjust that next and then we'll hook up the gas pedal and see where it wants to live once it has the tension on the carburetors. So all these pedals have to work together in unison for just like a great uh, driving experience. Okay, I've attached the gas pedal. So there's no gas in the carburetors right now, but it is working um, just like it should, gas pedal. Um, brake pedal is really good, very firm. And then the, the clutch pedal is working just fine. I, I'm being careful not to push it too far because you're supposed to have a stop there on the pedal board and it might the cable I think relax just a little bit I got to readjust the end play it's a little more than it was hopefully I didn't damage the pressure plate but it is getting closer but the biggest problem now is the brake pedal like I said before needs to go back time to undo it all and just adjust those rods in it's a little bit fiddly to deal with both of them but uh, it'll be worth it Okay, so now gas pedal, brake pedal, and you can still touch, you can almost touch the gas pedal just a little bit. So probably the next step would be to, you know, adjust the accelerator linkage a little bit more. So it's really close. I could certainly drive it at this point. The other thing is the brake pedal might be a little too close to the gas pedal. And if I was to move this over on the other side, it might have a different feel to it as well. But I, I kind of like it a little bit close like this. Um, and then of course the clutch is, is right there. Awesome. That's about it for the pedals. I now have everything connected. There's no emergency brake, but I have all the controls that I need 
Basically, all I have is a left and right turn signal flasher. I have hazard lights and I have the ignition key. Uh, no gauges yet. I may or may not put a tachometer in for the first drive. I'm not too worried about gauges. Um, but with the clutch in, the gears feel about the same. Next time, I will do more work under the car. I didn't put it up on the lift today because I thought I was just going to be playing around up here. But I did get a lot work of work done underneath. Um, but next time, I got to install the axles. And there's some oil lines I got to figure out in the back, too. So, almost there.